homework problem, problem number one. Okay? So you'll need your notebooks to do that in a couple minutes. But let me get there first. All right, so I think you guys all know that Q equals MC delta T, right? Q is the amount of heat it takes to do a job. M is the mass of the object or the substance. C is the heat capacity, which you look up in a table usually. And delta T is the change in temperature, okay? So if you want to make something warmer, you've got to add heat. How much heat you need to add, you can figure out. So just like the warm-up problem, um, how much heat do you need to add to a room? Well, it depends on the mass of the air in the room, and it depends on how much you want to change the temperature, and it depends on the heat capacity of the air, okay? So I think this is familiar to you. We just finished solving a problem set on it. I gave it to you on Friday. I said it was due Monday. I mean Tuesday, right? Because we're, we're going on on Tuesday. Um, on Canvas, it's not due till midnight. It's not my intention to force you to do work at 11 p.m. I'd like you to be done by now, because we're moving on today and we need it. But going from now until midnight is the extra grace period if you didn't quite get it done, all right? So it's not, I mean, you should be done by now. That's the idea. So um, I think you're pretty familiar with that. So here's the, what, what's gonna happen. We're gonna look at problems where two or more objects exchange heat. So if I have a really hot piece of metal and I put it in a cup of cold water, what happens to the thermal energy of the metal? Does it increase or decrease? Decrease. It decreases. It loses thermal energy. Where does it go? It goes into the water. Okay? So we're going to solve problems where there are exchanges of heat. And we're going to ask what happens. So. The big idea is that if we have a closed system, a system that is not gonna lose heat to other places, if all the heat from the hot piece of metal goes into the water and doesn't get lost, because you walked around the room and had a conversation, then we can say that the heat loss plus the heat gained equals zero, okay? Now, just a quick note, a lot of people wanna do this. They wanna say that the heat gained equals the heat lost. But you can't do that. You have a sign problem, all right? Um, let's, uh, let's think about net worth. Suppose your mom gives you a $20 bill, okay? What is the change in your mom's net worth? Negative 20. Negative 20. Does that equal the change in your net worth? What's the change in your net worth? It's positive 20. See what I mean by a sign problem? You can't say that um, what is lost by your mom and what is gained by you are the same. But if it's amount lost, it wouldn't it also be negative 20? Well, it's the change in her net worth is not equal to the change in your net worth. That's the point. But how can you make this true? Adding the other three to zero. Yeah, if you add them, you can say that the change in the net worth of the family is zero, right? If your mom gives you 20 bucks, does the net worth of your family change? No. So all of the changes internally have got to add up to zero. And so that's what we're doing here. We're saying that all of the heat exchanges, some of them are negative, some of them are positive, but when you add them all up, they give you zero. There's no net change in the energy. If there's no change in the energy, we say the energy is conserved, right? Just like we said back when we were solving problems of cars zooming down hills, right? It has potential energy here. When it gets to the bottom, it has kinetic energy. But as long as you didn't lose any energy, the total energy stayed the same, right? That was the idea. So this is the idea for thermal systems. The total energy of a system stays the same. Some things lose energy, some things gain energy, but the sum of all the energy changes adds up to zero. So that's the big idea, that's energy conservation for the unit. Okay, is it in your toolbox? Is it there? Yeah. Should be, okay? So the details are, how do you find Q? MC delta T. But the big idea is that the total energy changes in a system add up to zero, okay? So this is our first homework problem. I'm gonna solve it as an example problem, but since it's your homework problem, 
and you have the same numbers, you can solve it with me, you'll have the first problem done. Okay? So we'll do it together. Everybody has the same numbers on this very first problem. So this is problem set 7.3, question number one. So here's what we got. We got a hot piece of metal. Somebody was holding this metal in a piece of fire. It is hot. Then they take it out of the fire and they drop it in a cup of water. The hot piece of metal cools, the water warms up. They both end up at 36 degrees. And I want to know how hot was the iron to start with? Okay, so that's the problem we're solving. You guys have these numbers in your uh, question. Can you close your computer there, Wes? Thanks. All right, so how do we start a problem, guys? What do we do? We make a diagram, okay? So, what kind of diagram are we gonna make? Hot piece of metal. Or you can draw hot pieces of metal and fires and cups of water all you want, and that's great. But you don't have a diagram until you draw a graph of the temperature versus the heat. You can call this delta T or T, it doesn't matter. All right, what gains energy? The water. So the water starts at a low temperature, and as it adds energy, it gets warmer. So I'll call that the water. And it ends up at the final temperature, which is 36 degrees, right? But something else is going on here, too. Not only is the water gaining energy, but the iron is losing energy. So the iron looks like that. This is the iron. So what we're showing in our diagram is that the, as water gains energy, Q increases, the temperature goes up, and for the iron, Q is becoming negative, it's losing energy, and the temperature drops, and they both meet at a final temperature of 36 degrees, okay? Two substances will exchange energy as long as their temperatures are different. If two things have the same temperature, and you put them in contact, Energy doesn't flow between them, okay? Heat flows when there's a difference in temperature, which is kind of obvious. You stick your hand in a bathtub, and if it's the same temperature as your hand, it doesn't feel like anything at all, right? You don't lose any heat, you don't get any heat. The water just, we call it lukewarm, right? It's kind of body temperature. All right, so that is our diagram. What do we need left next? What variables are we going to need in our variable list? Mass, uh, delta T, and C. Yeah, and technically C is not a variable, it's a constant, but let's put it in our variable list. Because Q is MC delta T, we need MC and delta T for water and for iron. Okay, so it's a little bit of a big list, but here we go. We are gonna need the mass of the water and the mass of the iron. We are gonna need the heat capacity of the water and the heat capacity of the iron. We are gonna need the temperature of the water initial, the temperature of the iron initial, and we're gonna need the final temperature. Can you guys see all the way down there? Sorry, Evan, you got a terrible seat there. All right, why do we not need temperature final of the iron and temperature final of the water? Because they're both the same. Uh, because they're both the same at the end. What if they're not the same? Then you would have to have If they're not the same, the problem's not over. They keep, the, right, we, we wait until they get to the same temperature. All right, so they'll always be the same final temperature. Okay. All right, so we can fill this in. It's not terribly hard. The mass of the water is 240 grams, which is 0 0.240 kilograms. Right? Divide by 1,000 to get from grams to kilograms. Or move the decimal three places to the left. The mass of the iron is 0 0.030 kilograms, 30 grams of iron. The heat capacity of water. Anybody know it off the top of their head? 4,186. Oh, you do. 4,186 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. 
The heat capacity of IO, you have to look it up at a table, it's 448 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. Okay. The temperature of the water initially, what do you think, Wes? How hot was the water initially? Uh, 24. Yeah, it was 24 degrees Celsius. 24 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the iron initial, what's that? We don't know. That's what we're finding. That's what we're finding. So put a question mark there if you want, or just leave it blank, I don't care. And the final temperature is 36.0 degrees Celsius. Okay. All right. Now, let me get this cord out of the way. Here's the big idea. The big idea is that Q gained plus Q lost have got to add up to zero. And that is an energy conservation principle. So we are going to apply that principle. When we apply that principle, what the heck do we get? Well, what gains energy, Katie? What gains energy? The water does. So to find the energy gained, we're going to take the mass of the water, heat capacity of water, times T final minus the temperature of the water initial. That's MC delta T for the water. That's an expression for the heat that is gained. Is it positive or negative? Positive. Is T final bigger than T initial? Yes, that's positive for the water. All right, now we've got to get Q lost. How much energy is lost? Well, that's the iron. So we're going to have the mass of the iron, heat capacity of the iron, times temperature final minus temperature of the iron initial. And that's got to equal zero. Is this expression here positive or negative? What do you think, Toby? Negative. Why? Yeah, and because the final temperature of the iron is less than the initial temperature, that's going to be negative right there, right? So we've got a positive something plus a negative something adding up to zero. That's going to work. All right. We have applied the principle. We've got ourselves an equation. What's our plan? What are we going to solve this for, Bella? Yeah, the temperature of the iron initial, right? So we got to solve this big old equation for that thing right there. Now, really, we're done physics. I mean, the physics got us this equation. Now we just got to do a little bit of math, right? A little algebra. How the heck do you get that by itself? What would you do first, Danny? Yeah, I would bring this to the other side by subtracting it, right? So when I do that, I get mass of the iron, heat capacity of the iron, times temperature final minus the temperature of the iron initial, that's this term, equals minus mass of the water, heat capacity of water, temperature final minus the temperature of the water initial. Okay, I'll give you a second. All right, what would you do next? Josh? Uh, divide by T mass and uh, heat capacity. Yeah, you're trying to get this here, right? So it probably makes most sense to divide by M times C. Is that the only way you can do it? Could you distribute this to get rid of the parentheses and then keep going? Absolutely. You can do it. There are millions of paths to take. Okay? And that will work. So if you're getting bored, try doing it that way. Distribute and then solve. But I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by the mass of the iron, heat capacity of the iron. So this is the mass of the iron, heat capacity of the iron. And that cancels that. Just for clarity, I'm going to rewrite it. I've got T final minus the temperature of the iron initial equals minus the mass of the water, heat capacity of the water, temperature final minus the temperature of the 
water initial all over massive IO heat capacity of iron. So there we go, I just rewrote it. I'm trying to find temperature of the iron initial, right? I'm almost there. How do we get rid of the temperature final? Is it multiplied by Ti? So don't divide. It's added to it, right? So subtract. Subtract T final from both sides, and that cancels that. It gets it off of there, right? So, are we done? What do you got to do, Maddie? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've got a negative T initial, so you got to multiply everything by negative 1. If I multiply this by negative 1, it becomes positive. If I multiply this term by negative 1, it becomes positive. And I multiply that term by negative 1, it becomes positive. Okay? So there's my solution. The temperature of the iron initial is equal to this expression right here. I'll rewrite it with my numbers in it. You guys grab your calculator and see if you can compute this, okay? So I'm going to have 0 0.240 kilograms times 4,186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius times 36 degrees minus 24 degrees, all over 0 0.030 kilograms times 448 joules per kilogram degree Celsius plus 36.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, here's what I want you to do, guys. Do that on your calculator in one line. None of your normal 14 steps. Try to do it all in one line. When you get an answer, open your computer, poke it into homework question number one. It'll tell you if you're right or not, but I still want to see it all in one line. So that's the assignment we're going to do. When you finish that one, you can move on to the next one. That's just an example. That's, so in every case on this assignment, we're going to apply Q gain plus Q loss equals zero, okay?